Hi everyone, and welcome to a special edition of some kind of SparkFun live event. We are celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we have a This Is My Lifestyle of interview with some old school people. We've got Nathan Seidel, who is the founder, the original OG engineer, and we've got Pete Doctor, who was hired to be another engineer to help Nate out with um, some other things like tech support, customer service, and building some of the products and projects that you may have remembered if you were around from the old days, but we get to take a look at those and see what they're all about. And to host all of this, we've got Bob. All right. Bob. Hi, Bob. Thank you, Sean. Welcome. Hey, guys. Bob. All right, <laughs> so. Uh, like Sean said, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Uh, there's really no rhyme or reason to what's about to happen, so let's let's dive in. It could be chaos. Sweet. So I'm just going to pull just a random artifact, and you guys are going to talk about it. We're ready. Let's start with it. Let's see if this does anything. <laughs> so maybe I should is, show it off first. Yeah, this is more in your uh, neck of the woods, Bob. This is, uh, there we go. Yeah. Reflow oven number <laughs> one. <laughs> I guess two technically from what, what you were saying earlier. Yeah, but. so um, these are the old oven recipes. So we would send stuff through the reflow oven and you had to dial in the reflow oven to make sure that it kind of worked correctly. Was this um, Gramps or the one that we got from uh, uh, yes. Hans? Hans. Yeah. I remember Hans. I remember that oven. Yeah, so uh, we had uh, reflow hot plates for years where mm -hmm. we would manufacture the boards, we'd put solder paste on it, Profile. and then <laughs> place yep. the components and put on a hot plate to reflow it. And that worked for a while until it started to back up and then we got multiple hot plates to try to parallel the demand. And then we bought uh, a used reflow oven from our landlord at the time that we nicknamed Gramps? Yes. Why did we nickname it Gramps? Um, so I think the Gramps moniker came after we had purchased the next reflow oven. Okay. We um, had something good to compare it to? Yeah, because that <laughs> one was only from the 80s and we assumed Gramps was from the pre-80s. Yeah. And so so he was the, the old old man, I guess. Um, my understanding but, is yeah. that Gramps me, never held a profile. Cards. Yeah, there's... Right, I thought Gramps oh was just God. like, turn it all on. No. Because it wouldn't do a profile. Probably. No. It did. Yeah, it could, yeah, it could, it could hold temperature. Man. What's interesting is, yeah. The products. And they're all like slightly tweaked. Yeah, which, different numbers. Oh, man. Which is interesting because now we know that that is actually like, you know, pretty important in terms of reflow. <laughs> but at that time, we were just guessing. <laughs> Micro so, yeah, so the RG matrix was a backpack to control a red green dot matrix display. Yeah, I remember. So it wasn't even RGB, it was RG. And then uh, USB Weather V1, that was where we combined a bunch of weather sensors onto a single board and put USB on it. And then SCP 1000 was the very first, was that humidity or pressure? I think. I just remember the package, and it was this round plastic thing. Wasn't it thing. temp and pressure? Temp and pressure, probably. But it was like the first of I its kind, the yep. and the package was really easy to melt. Yep. <laughs> and I remember the micro about this one. Rue stick oh. and Rue 232. So it was a it was a thing to convert the Roomba to RS 232. Yeah. God, this is awesome. All the things we have discontinued. Thanks, <laughs> Although I think, Shifter. is it the micro Murph still? Do we still sell that? Uh, that was the little yeah. one, the chip yeah. antenna. Yeah. Basically, it's the yeah the I can't believe NRS it. two four L O one A yeah. yep twenty four O one range of like ten feet and you did a, yeah, you did a range study off of your Jeep yeah on the street that was a good time that was fun <laughs> ah this is awesome uh, uh, good stuff yeah uh, uh, DOS on chip. It was the little IC that we put next to an SD socket that eventually became the open model. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I do remember that one. I like how some still have the proto after them, too. Like we added, oh. we hadn't quite perfected it, so it was the proto still steps. proto mm. Sweet. Good stuff. Yeah. What did you say? Maybe we can put, let's put the finished, finished goods over there. Yeah, sure. 
Six tough V3. Mm -hmm. That made a lot of people angry. <laughs> a lot of people angry. <laughs> 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 Neat. Okay. Yeah, thanks. On to the next. Oh, let's do it. Back I'm, I'm looking at what's coming. Uh, I think uh, Jordan provided this. So this is just a picture. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Mike. There might be a couple dun, dun, of these. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. So that's just a picture of some shelves, but you can see some rotary yeah. phones in there. You can see the Roomba. It looks uh, like a golden age. Let's just ah. talk, talk about that. Where, where is that exactly? Uh, okay, 2500 Central Avenue. Uh, it was our first commercial space, and we had moved from the rental house into this commercial space, and I was too cheap to think that we needed to hire a janitor. <laughs> So we were developing the Roomba stuff at the time. So we had a Roomba. I was like, yeah. who needs a janitor? We'll just run the Roomba. And that lasted, I don't know, like a week and a half. <laughs> uh, turns out Roombas don't take trash out. <laughs> um, so <laughs> eventually we hired a janitor very quickly. But uh, yeah, the, the Roomba. Uh, the production department was one room. Yeah. With like five guys in it and a hot plate. And the room next to it was the engineering the office. Engineering stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but the, the rotary phones. Talk, talk about the rotary phones. Uh, so so that was um, when 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 Nate and I hooked up, so to speak. Um, that was the task. Was Pete? Look at this thing. I'm making this this phone, but I can't get the ringer to work. And I knew how to make the ringer work. And that was task number one: was to make that ringer circuit the rotary work. Phone. There. Ah, sweet. Can I? Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, there's a Bluetooth one. Yep. Yeah, it was a later model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit it. Yeah. Hit it. Hit that thing. There you go. Ah, oh, so, so rotary phones. Um, let's see. No FCC testing of any kind. Uh, we had to buy <laughs> the phones used from I don't know. Of eBay. Sources. Yeah, eBay. Canada, I think. A bunch came I, from Manitoba for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yep. Yep. Um, boy. I, I think the like very original ones had lithium polymer batteries without a safety circuit on them. Because we yep. were buying bare cells. Yep. Yes. That yeah. was, it would all run off of one cell and was straight off of it. Um, I was I remember I was there terminating. Was a charge circuit in there. That was before we ever did a light bulb no, chart, did it? Well, wait, wait, this is some Bluetooth, so this was a later one, right? Oh, this isn't. That's right. The original had a separate charger. Yeah. Just looking at this, I can remember the smell of manufacturing <laughs> yeah. these because you'd get in there and you'd start to solder the wires from like the old, you know, oh, the old like ringer the circuit wire and stuff like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. There, there were stranded wires that had all sorts of nasty old stuff on them mm -hmm. and just the, yeah, the smell like i can i can <laughs> smell it still brings it back for you <laughs> yep mm -hmm. yeah and it would take a day if you were fast to make a phone a couple of days if you were <laughs> if you were new on it oh man 1968 made in canada yep if uh if prashanta is watching <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you prashanta uh he was the the phone guy and he transferred his tribal knowledge to me and I was the phone guy and then we actually thought about you know maybe writing some assembly documentation to to make it happen instead of just having it in our heads verbally like hey this is how you do it yep yep wow. was there a Schmidt trigger on that dial circuit or did you just like just a pick no so it was just on a code you sort of like yeah. introduced some hysteresis and that was good enough to on the dial circuit yeah. So, uh, so I it's just like an open close. Yeah. Right. So, so it's just looking for. It. I had some D bounce on the switch. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what that was it. Yeah. There's two switches in the hook switch and the dial switch and the count <coughs> um, Yeah. That was that was a good time. I remember um, the first couple batteries that terminated. I had uh, cut off whatever connector we had on it, and I had the two wires exposed, and I had the wires stripped, and I was going to solder to it, and the positive and negative touched, and. <laughs> the uh, the wires just went up in smoke because there was no safety circuit, there was no limit, so it just discharged through the wires. Yep. Um, I, I like our batteries much better now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember outside the garage at the house, 
you were like poking at a lipo with a knife. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> which I would have done too, but I wasn't the sucker in that particular scenario. Future scenarios, I was. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Way so back in the day. I have an idea to maybe bring some continuity to sure the conversation. So <clears throat> this is a bit. Um, Let's see. I didn't. I didn't know we put spilt stickers on the inside of the. I machine. was not aware of that. Huh. That's interesting. One five seven six eight, and there is no damned way. No, we made put, 15 What are the initials? No, no, no. <laughs> build I did total builds. Oh, okay. initials E O E O E line. No. I don't know who that is. E, 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 not back e. then. No. That's interesting. Um, okay, so this one is is more. I guess on a on a personal note, um, but it still speaks to what was happening in the, at that at, at time. that time. Yeah. And uh, so, okay, so let me show the picture. So this is the picture. Oh. Zoom in this on is, that. This is Abe. Abe. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's Abe, and then you can see he's on the phone. What's he standing in front? That's right. That's what I want you to talk that's about. The, that's the sparkly oh green limo. Oh my limo. god. Uh, so SparkFun slash Nate uh, purchased, half purchased, uh, we went in with a buddy, uh, me and my buddy were on Craigslist one day and found a, <laughs> found a limousine for like $4,000 and we were like, how, how can you pass up a limo? How, for how bad can this be? <laughs> how wrong can this go? I, I, I think we spent easily <laughs> six to $10,000 on that limousine. Um, but it was a ton of fun. We had it for two or three years, and um, it's sparkly green finish. The, everything was flaking off. Um, the axle bent. The, the suspension blew out. Uh, all sorts of problems. But we had a ton of fun because we would roll up to various occasions, and Abe would come out carrying one of these rotary phones and kind of wow the bouncer, and we would we would just have all sorts of fun and shenanigans. <laughs> There's, I remember yeah. bouncing some airplanes off of it in the back lot. The last oh, yeah. it, was, yes. it was so big I couldn't yeah. park it at my house, so I had to park it at Spark Fun. Yep. Uh, yep. And every year we had to move it for ABC. Yep. Because <laughs> it was in the way. Yep. Of the course. That was always uh, an interesting, uh, I guess, feature for new hires. Everybody would, as soon as they would see it, they'd be like, we have a limo? We have a limo? Why do we have a limo? Yeah. Yeah. Is it going the limo? You're, you're giving we it too a, much credit. We got a limo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I was digging up this picture, um, that series of pictures was really interesting. That's, was, this is Adam. I don't know who that is. Yeah, is that I'm not, is that you? I thought that was you. No, I think that's um, Casey. Could be Casey. Casey Haskell. Haskell. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, but the folder was titled Prom, and I, I don't, Whoa. I don't recall a SparkFun Prom, but Spark Fun prom. that's what the folder was. I don't called. know. Uh, I don't remember that event. We had a, we had a lot of weird black tie things that we went to, but. Just for silly, we um, we don't dress up at Spark Fun, and we don't have uh, what do you call that? Uh, Casual dress. Friday. We have formal Friday. We don't have a dress code, and so um, given the chance, we it, we like to dress up. Yep. And so we would go out all dressed up, way overdressed to some of these <laughs> things. Uh, Abe wore it well, though. Abe wore it. He well. sort of like you know, made the place. Yeah. Took up a notch. Yeah. Okay. As did you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I remember you being fun. dressed up well. Yeah, and we actually did uh, formal Fridays as a thing, like yeah. for for, for a, yeah for a yeah. while, yeah. and would actually come to work in suit and tie, and, like do production solder <laughs> stuff <laughs> in, in suit and tie. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, let's keep digging. Let's let's jump forward in time. What do we oh, have wow. here? Um, I don't remember this. This is uh, from the groundbreaking, so of this building. Oh, oh. So oh. we, um, yeah. You, you did so, it with this. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, maybe not with that one exactly, but uh, so Spark Fun built the building that we're sitting in today, and uh, we broke ground on this in uh, May first of 2013. I remember because it was three days before my wedding. Um, so we went out on this crazy adventure to build this building. To do that, we had, I think it was like 100 people, 150 people on site. And to commemorate the event, uh, we were like, hey, let's put some little tiny shovels together. And then I think we laser etched them. Right? Yeah, yeah 5113, and yep. then um, biggest widget yet. Nice. <laughs> nice. 
Um, so yeah, we broke ground um, just with some silly shovels, and we had some diggers out there, and we had the general contractor out, and then it was an event. It was an event, and then 15 months later, roughly, I think, we actually moved in. So it took a while to, to put this place together, um, but glad we did. This building has been really, really good. Yeah. Um, 2013. It's now. It's been almost three and a half years. Four. Oh, almost five. Five. five to October three, yeah. five. Yeah. So you are, really. Man, I'm glad we did that. I'm glad you saved that. I don't know where mine is. That that's not mine, but somebody had thank you to whoever should hang on a wall someplace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It'll go back to its rightful owner. Okay. Yeah, you can see the paint flecking off. Let's go. Let's go here. Nothing but glass. <laughs> oh God. Did I give you that? Um, Who crushed the time cube? Was that is that your creation? Yeah. Oh. That was for a video that I think everyone universally hated. Ooh. Here you so, go. You, you so hold this your was creation. This piece of ridiculousness um, was uh, for um, an April Fools' video that we did. Where uh, we were sort of mimicking. Uh, 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 the movie into the no what time travel know? movie uh, Delorean. Back, back, back to the future, the future. And, uh, sort of kinda. <laughs> uh, except this, I sort of modeled this on the um, uh, uh, the the Ober thruster from uh, Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> right, and so I was aiming. I was aiming for something like that, and it was just you know designed to confuse. So I threw a bunch of garbage in it. So there's a speaker in there, and it makes noise. This thing is. It actually uh, functions. Oh, it well, I mean, it doesn't it's travel through time, time, but it makes it much means. sort of kind of. Um, I'm traveling through time right now, man. Um, but this <laughs> is uh, there's like this little noisemaker thing in here that was like a guitar thing. You press the buttons, and it plays little guitar sounds, and the. Uh, the uh, Pro Mini just activates various circuits, and so it'll randomly blink LEDs and make noise. And I had this thing hanging from my rear view mirror. Hmm. And I drove around. Oh, and then you, this got swapped out for people? Yes. Ha, yes, exactly so. We have, a, we have somebody at Sparkfun, uh, he works in our uh, design department named Pete Fulm, and uh, he actually is like a, a ringer for Pete Doctor, um, and so they, yeah, time, 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 Pete time travels. Pete time cube. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Greg did a voiceover that was supposed to be Gary Busey. So Gary Busey was like my, my alter ego, who was like, but Pete, da 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 and he'd say something goofy like that, so. God. Was it, you said this was April Fools? This was, yeah, yeah this was certain April Fools. Was uh, this the same April Fools we did the Aldoff? So that the, was a different one. Okay. So the, the that was yeah. fun. So we've been doing, you know, um, it started with the six Doff. The six degree of freedom, that's what Doff stands for, degree of freedom. Six degree of freedom, I am you. And back in the day, that was a big deal to take three gyros and the triple axis accelerometer, get the three, six degrees of uh, freedom. Um, and then six Doff became, I think we did like a, a nine Doff at some point because we added a magneto and then you could add some more to it. Do you uh, mean, yeah, yeah. Do you mean oh, this six Doff? Prop. Bring yeah. that baby. Mike, so, want to get a zoom on this? Um, this was the six Doff V4 or five because it had the, is it the V3? It says V3. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one got quite a bit yeah, smaller. That was our... This has, instead of three discrete gyros, has a single triple axis gyro on it. No, 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 no. It's got one dual oh, and God. one single. Oh, right? God. This is before they packed all of them into one part. Yep. yep. And so this was like, why is it stepping in between? It's bad and bad. <laughs> What's well, it's in production. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's too much solder on here, man. Yeah. This is never going to work. So, uh, God, yeah, I remember this is LPC 2138, and all the sensors were on a different board, and I stacked it, and we sold it for a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount. Ridiculous amount. And then um, we stuck Bluetooth on it, so it was yep. the wireless six off. Wireless six off, and people dug it. Uh, but we, we did the six off, and then um, the joke was is that it was it would become nine off someday with Magneto, and then we would add very much pressure to be ten off, mm -hmm. and then be twelve off. And so for April Fools one year, we created the all off, which was just this huge conglomeration of red boards and gobbledygook. And uh, 
that was the year that we got in trouble with customer service because we actually listed stock. Right. <laughs> and so people, either knowing or unknowingly, purchased this thing that was a total joke. Uh, and then customer service, after you know five or ten of these had sold, had to then begin to email customers and say, oh, no, no, it's a, it's a joke. You can't actually purchase one. <laughs> um, we, we got in trouble that year. But, yep. So how did production feel about that guy, Bob? Um, the trip down memory pers- lane. Yeah, for yeah. You. Um, personally, I loved it. Um, those were the really? builds. Yeah, those were the builds that were fun, where you had multiple things that you had to put together because it really took. You had to be very um, dexterous, or had ambidextrous, or no, just good dexterity, dexterity. like because okay. you had to hold. Yeah, maybe it was the V two. I think had the like the. Um, V two was the a blue smurf, move. right? But it didn't have like a blue smurf like sticking straight up out of it, Probably. and then another gyro. Yeah, yeah. And so you had to you had the the main board, and you had to you know at a ninety degree angle hold this thing in, and then hit it with solder, and so you were all bound up. Yeah, but it was a challenge, and it was fun. It's pretty wild that this this entire gobbledygook of sensors and controllers are now built into. A four, by, a four by five millimeter piece of black. Yep. Right. Right. The, this this total volume that is, is now obsolete. All, all the way down into your your pinky nail. And I think this retailed for four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. That. Right. Yeah. Four fifty was and the original one, and then it went down. And now we sell the nine off stick for. Forty dollars, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so. it's just going to keep going down. Yeah, yeah, that was all rudimentary code, and it wasn't. This was pre Arduino too, so there wasn't any easy yeah. way to do it. Yeah, you, you were you were programming uh, in Eclipse. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, the LPC. Okay. That's cool. Let's see. I'm, I'm just looking at like the the, the jumpers and the auto routing. And the um, oh no, that one wasn't auto routed. That one, that one was hand routed. Routed. Oh, oh yes, oh, oh yes. Um, I I specifically remember doing that. Um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, man, we've learned a lot. Yeah, <laughs> coming awfully long. Back. All right, moving from great technology to great people. Hmm. Why don't you guys take a look at this? Oh, man. Take a look at this picture. I remember the night. This is Paul. Paul. He was our mechanical engineer. And for like the month before we found out that he had done this, he wore a hat. He had a stocking cap on like all the time. And then we had uh, we had an engineering outing where we went. Uh, we went out for beers. Um to uh, blah, 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 the place up in Longmont. Oscar Blues? Yes. And uh, and we were all, like, some of us were inside drinking. Some of us were outside talking about drinking. And and Paul's with us, and all of a sudden he just... And we're like, what? what? You've got to be out of your mind. I'm like, oh, jeez. Oh, um, later found out that that was one of the motives uh, behind his wife's divorce thing. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, oh, man. I guess that did not go over so well at home. But, yeah, everybody just flipped when they saw it. He, he loved pushing it. He did it. his. He really did. He, he occasionally pushed that line a little far, but he very much exemplified uh, the spark fun ethos. He, mm-hmm. was, he was about it. He was one of us. I, I think he he's behind one of my favorite action shots. So uh, for we still I think we still sell the, the spork. The yep. open source spork. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he came up with he designed the spork, he came up with the name, he did all this, and then I don't know if it was his idea or uh, Rojas's or Greg's, but there's a great picture of of Paul in like this crazy construction outfit eating yep. a can of beans. With a sport, <laughs> yep. And it, yeah, again, it just exemplified. It was a great demonstration of the product yep. and the humor of Spark Fun. Yeah, and it was at the old building. He's sitting outside the pond, and yeah. so it had this like <laughs> it was the serenity of yeah, the yeah, 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 cesspool like, outside. Yeah, but then he's eating a can of beans with a titanium fork. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was also going to ask, like, um, speak to like. So this picture is one of many that we have around the building. Oh yeah. Um, kind of what we when we did move into the space, what we like, why this exists and why we hang it up and the, the other art around the building. Yeah. Um, I, I can't place the the initials. 
That's me. Oh. Yep. Bob. Pokey. Yep. <laughs> Robert, you know. Robert. Yep. Bob. Yep. Same, same. Nice to meet you. Bob. Bob. It's no. not ringing a bell. It's not Bob. Sure. <laughs> so, um, it was years ago. Uh, the walls of our office building were horrendous. The place was Swiss cheese. It was dark. It was dreary. I was like, hey, we could really use some something on the walls. Uh, so I emailed the company. I was like, does anybody have any art that they want to turn into photo of uh, printed framed things? And we'll throw it up on the wall. And I think the first batch was probably 10 or 15. It uh, turns out there's a lot of uh, awesome amateur slash semi-professional photographers at Sparkphone. Um, so this is an excellent example of sort of the humor that you capture around Sparkphone. But there's also just amazing photographs that people have taken over the years. And we've done it kind of year after year. Mm -hmm. and so all over Sparkphone, there's some really cool photographs that people have taken. Yep. I think my favorite is still uh, Matt Bolton with the spanner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what's fun is it brings you know previous facilities and previous employees, and it kind of like keeps the continuum of Spark Fun moving on. Keeping our roots, man. New space. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, we had a uh, mine is Gordon and the baby chick. So so Brian uh, <laughs> Brian in Brian Education um, was raising baby chickens, and so for whatever reason he was showing them off at the office. So he had like a dozen chicks. And it's spark fun. And then Gordon was this uh, guy who worked in customer service. Just huge, scary tattoos everywhere. And you got him on the phone, and he was the nicest guy in the world, the best customer service agent you you could ever wish for. And so there's a great picture of Gordon, big, huge dude, scary tattoos everywhere, holding a little tiny baby chick. It's <laughs> awesome, right? And it, it just it made for a great photograph. And. Um, yeah, capture those moments over the years. Yep. Um, yeah, lesson learned. I talked about this in my blog post. Uh, take pictures along the way, right? You want to capture as many moments like these as you can. Yep. Okay. Well, maybe not not quite. But, you know, other <laughs> other moments like these. Paul, God. But God. maybe not shave your head like. But that. maybe not shave your head. Talk about that. All right. Let's see what's in here. Let's, Let's see, this is Let's see if this rings a bell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, well, I'll let Bob hold it so we can yep. zoom in on it. Um, what? This is a test bed. This is a test bed from uh, ages and ages ago. I think it's test bed V2. Um, and what it is, is it's a pick. Um, that has been broken out to a bunch of female headers and right angle male headers. And we were like, oh, okay, so Bob, what are some of the words on that? Like, those are product names. Yep. Um, so we got the MMA 7260Q, the IMU Combo, ADXL E8, which I don't recall. Ooh, that was a bird. That was a dual axis. ADXL 32X. Uh, ADXRS Gyro, yeah. Blue Smurf Extended, Blue Smurf Basic. Sweet. Did you do that board? I think so. Um, so I did it. Uh, let me see this. I think I did it in Protel. I think this oh. is in Protel. Yeah, uh, predates Eagle. Um, so <laughs> we would have these products, and uh, Pete and I would design them, and then to make them work, we would have like a pick and a breadboard with some wires going to a spot with it, and you would hold the product at a right angle to the header, and you'd hit the reset button on the breadboard, and then maybe we'd blink an LED, or we'd output something to the serial port, and that's how we would test this gyro breakout, or this accelerometer breakout, or whatever it was. Um, and that worked great for the first 50. And then, <laughs> we, the would, started then we would get tired of testing them, so we would give the, bre <laughs> the, the breadboard to somebody in production and say, hey, here's your, the way that you're gonna test this accelerometer breakout. And they say, okay. And they would do it, and it would work. And then you guys would build another batch, and you would pull the uh, breadboard off the shelf while a wire had fallen out. So it didn't work. So we'd come back to me and Pete, and we'd hot glue everything down. <laughs> So none of the wires would come out yep. and give it back to you guys. Yep. And it wouldn't work again. And so we're like, you know what? We're going to turn this into a printed circuit board and make it. So this was sort of like a universal test bed yeah. uh, to test whatever it was, eight or 10 different products. And um, you know, look at it. it again, we learned so many things because some badass coogen oh, there. Oh, yeah. Well, did you, did you see I got the voltage rater messed up? The legs oh, on nice. the voltage rater. Oh. Um, so it's, <laughs> um, 
It's a, what's this package, TO220? Yeah. The TO220 voltage regulator, um, I get, there's three pins, and I got the two pins switched, so rather than throwing away the PCB, um, I just twisted the legs of the voltage regulator to, to make to make it work. That's legal. And, it's uh, totally legal. Yeah, it, you know, it worked. Uh, this is probably an LM317 with a switch to control it in between 3.3 and 5 volts. Yep. Yeah, so if you've got a 5 volt board, you switch to 5 volts and you got 3.3. Um, so yeah, this is how we were going to revolutionize uh, the yep. testing of product. Yep. And this is, so this is just SFE testbed V2. I remember we had testbed Charlie, testbed Bravo, testbed Echo. Wow. And so it, it same, same setup. Same concept. Yeah, yeah. The multiple devices, one test board. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we had 15 or 20 or however, however many assemblies we had at the time. <laughs> oh, the, the oh, that's oh, I was going to use, yeah. We got lots of... It looked like, like a tornado. Yeah. This guy here. So that. Hold, if you, yeah, hold it up right. so we can. Um, do, 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 do. This is uh, the original SparkFun logo had sort of. I, I paid $100 to, you know, $100logo.com or something. And so you can see the S and then parkfun.com. And so that was the original logo. And we slapped it on all of our PCBs. Um, last people, IQ. People call oh, the last IQ. That was a GPS breakout board. Yep. Yeah. Man. And there's a date code on it. Yes. What's the... <laughs> um, uh, July 19th, 2006. So this is 11 years... No, oh, there's 11, 12 years old now. Yep. Um, but that's how we used to do things. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the Park Fun the park logo. logo. Yeah. What I was going to say about the test jigs is um, we're all hacks. We're all, <laughs> we're all... We have no idea... How do you design a test jig? We didn't know. There was no class in college. There was no online course. There was no blog talking about how, you know, this is how we design professional test jigs. It was 2006. Figured it was out. 2005. It was like, well, let's, let's hack it together. Turns out um, you can test a couple hundred units on those right angle female headers before the header before starts to break right yeah. from the, from the uh, flexion. Yep. And um, so we learned. So we don't do it like this anymore because it, it breaks after a couple hundred <laughs> units. Pogo pins have saved us. Pogo the pins. one before that. This it totally reminds me of uh, the uh, Murph the, the Murph test, test, yeah, test, test bed. that was on a uh, breadboard with like tons of hot glue. Oh my god! And all the, yeah, right and know. one one Murph that was supposed to be stationary, like and it would, they had to communicate. It would transmit yeah. forward yep. and back to check all the stuff, and like yeah, like once a week I would get that thing back. Like, the, pulled out. Yeah, like the known good or the test bed Murph wasn't even in the breadboard. It was up on wires, and so it was it was oh. all loosey goosey <laughs> there. Like for whatever reason, we just had single gauge wire up to the Murph. <laughs> it was just like floating in midair. Makes sense. Not, not my reason. best work, but it was effective for a few days. We we never expected to sell more than a hundred of anything. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. It was like, uh, I don't know how long it's gonna last. Try this. Okay. Oh uh, God. This Ready is, for this? this is, oh. Here. Yeah, zoom in on that. So, uh, this is into rowing. This is the solo version. Uh, so, how do you tell this story without like? Okay, so I <laughs> I rowed in college, and the in the rowing world, um, there was one company that owned the entire market, and it, it amplified voice. Uh, and read some metrics mm. on how fast the boat was, uh, the strokes per minute and a bunch of stuff. It was a very expensive device. And so I was like, oh, I think I can build a better device. So I started learning about microcontrollers. That's what got me into PICS. That's when my programmer broke. And so then I started uh, buying parts from Olamex and that's when SparkFun started. So my original business idea was to build stuff for rowing. Uh, and then SparkFun started to feed the research and development for Into Rowing. Uh, Into Rowing is a device, it's got inside this thing, there's an uh, uh, LPC2148 because it had USB on it. Mm. And then it drove a uh, graphic display that was expensive, it had a touch screen uh, originally, had an EL backlight. This thing has a battery in it, it has a voice amplifier, it has a tri-axis accelerometer. We had all sorts of stuff going on. Um, what we found out is that it's uh, hard to design electronics, 
it's extremely difficult to design consumer grade electronics. So when somebody orders something from SparkFun, they have a certain expectation of, okay, I've got to read the data sheet, I've got to solder to it, I've got to do all these things. When somebody buys a consumer device, they expect it to be bulletproof and I just got to plug the cable in and it's just going to work. Um, SparkFun uh, could not quite... Level of quite... support we weren't quite willing to... Yeah, yeah, SparkFun was not quite there yet. Um, so we uh, ran this for, what, four or five years? Doing research and development, trying to yeah. get these units to work. <clears throat> Ultimate failure. Just it spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on it and it just burned to the ground. Um, so very, very good lesson, very painful yeah. lesson. Um, but yeah, we lots don't... of um, yeah, lots of good uh, 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 experimenting. A lot of good, yeah, good lesson is what you're saying. But a lot of things that we carried on into further product development. There's so many things. Uh, uh, can you find me a screwdriver, Phillips? That screwdriver. Uh, maybe we can open it up. I think but... I just yanked this off. It might. No, no, I think we might oh. get it open. But what it taught us was the um, there's multiple PCBs in there. They're double-sided, all sorts right. of stuff. Uh, it forced us to learn how to do double-sided PCBs. Mm -hmm. It forced us to do um, really hard, tight layouts and uh, stenciling and all sorts of stuff. So even though Intu failed, Intu Rowing, that company failed, I think it really helped that spark. Yeah, time. we took a lot away from yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Made us do real engineering. Kind of, yeah. Cool. So this is a specific PCB you'll see in a second here. Yeah, GPS wall clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. V2. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what V1 did differently from V2, but... Uh, so we still have one of these functional downstairs. Uh, the right? board, maybe. Definitely the digits. Right. I know Mike Hord redid the digits, so they they're now red, green, blue. But um, so this this um, it, it was uh, it's a PIC 16F877A and hooked up to a bunch of Darlington transistor drivers, and then each one of these would control uh, a seven segment display. Um, yeah, it was basically like a senior design project. Uh, the GPS module would go right there. It was a Lassen IQ. Uh, you rig this thing up, and it would talk to the Lassen IQ and pull down time. And then you could light up some really big seven segment displays with it. So uh, this was a 12 foot wide GPS clock that was accurate to 100 nanoseconds, I think is the GPS resolution. Yeah. Um, it was really cool. We did a tutorial about it, got picked up, um, and then I took the wall clock to the very first Maker Fair and put it up on stage, and it counted the seconds since Maker Fair started or something. But um, yeah, got the old programming header. Oh, I hated that thing. That, that was that was ridiculous. Um, so like those little little tiny pins. The little tiny pins. Yeah. I had a stash of those in my desk yep. with broken pins and stuff. Like, you had to hold it at a right angle yep. to program the pick. Um, so it was one of those things. I had to design it for the tutorial for the project, but the <clears> I was <throat> like, well, maybe other people will, could use this. And so we made the product and then posted the product for sale. And I, I think we sold a couple dozen, but it was just a kind of a specialized product to control seven segment displays. Um, okay, so here's here's This inside. is the inside of the solo. Oh my god. Oh. You got your SD card, you got your uh, GPS, a right have, angle have, so it faces the sky. Um, it was a, uh, yeah, the GPS module had to be yeah, at a right angle. GPS modules in the, in the was that lower right? Ooh, this yeah, guy. yeah, that's the GPS module. So, and then we had a main controller, the LPC twenty one forty eight, and then we had a supervisory. My, uh, this is an MSP. Oh, is that the one on the on the right there? Yeah. Okay. A, the little micro and the it, to go low power, it would power up and down the subsystems um, and the accelerometers, the square on the right. I never worked on the into. God, it was. Uh, this was a yeah, complex project. Joel, so this is Joel's box of goodies. Ah, um, and okay. it was, um, he and uh, Andrew were like the dedicated in two guys okay. for however many months, years. Yeah. And that's yeah. all they worked on was making those PCBs. And yeah. It was a very intimate relationship with those two. Heart build. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I'm so glad they saved us. So many things. Because it? it's working in the water, so you got to. Right. 
Then there was the the bigger one that was like a double yep. double s size. Of that, um, like. that added a secondary PCB that was the uh, voice amplification. Okay. And so yeah, you increased the battery size, increased uh, the circuitry, um, increased cost, increased <coughs> complexity. Just uh, it was all over the place. Um, yeah. And then I, I didn't bring it in, but at home I have the orange, like bulletproof case that, yeah. that you bought. Oh, the storm cases. Yeah, Pelican yeah. storm cases. Yep. Yeah, yep. To put these in, mm -hmm. and then and now it's my glorified camera case, oh, like yeah. my, all my GoPro stuff. And whatnot, uh, so. That's because we had all this inventory of stuff <laughs> when we closed down the business. It's like, what do you do with all this? And I was like, hey, anybody want some carrying cases? Yeah. We're never going to sell these things. I snagged a couple myself. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah, guys got good. <laughs> They're nice cases. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, all so. right, let's go here. Ah, Jeff's helmet at the uh, great Burn Our Worst Products thing. What yep. was it called? What was the event? The Viking, Viking Funeral. Viking Funeral. Right, yep. right, right, right. Burn Our Worst Products <laughs> event. <laughs> so, turns out Vikings never actually wore horns, I guess. So it's I think fine. it was it was kind of spurred on by you, Nate. You mm -hmm. you overheard a, some production person kind of complaining about a build. Yep. And said, was, "Well, what else do you?" It was my build, and it hurt that it was like they hated to build the thing. My my baby. It was like, but I always felt that as a point of pride. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was it was uh, rude. it was sorry, Bob. It was Bluetooth, and they had to cut and strip. It was like 28 gauge, very thin wire, and then get the stranded wire into these little tiny holes on the board and hold everything together and solder it just the right way. And it was it was pain in the ass. Um, so I was like, oh, you don't like building this? What else don't you like to build? And I thought it was Abe. It may have been somebody else in production. Rattled off like, oh my god, I hate to build this and this and this build is horrendously bad. We I had no idea. I didn't know it was hard to build. Um, and so I kind of I spitballed the idea of the Viking funeral. I think. Yep. Yeah. I think a couple and of then, mine went down with the. Yeah, I went think there down was, with flames. There was at least seven or eight different assemblies. And I, I remember it being in production. We actually had to basically like upvote which of all of the horrible assemblies we we actually <laughs> wanted to put on the boat and, and light on fire. Most so, glorious. Because I think yeah. the limit was five. It was, like, was it five? Yeah, it was, five it was five. and we probably had fifteen or so that that we had to narrow it down from. Um, but yeah, five that was, isn't enough. That was a good lesson in DFM, right? DFM, like that was, for manufacturing. that was the biggest takeaway. The engineers and we were physically upstairs. We were upstairs well, in the building. Okay, this, this is a, it's not like we didn't make an effort to make it easier. But I mean, there are some things you just can't shortcut. And it was always, right, there was always this back and forth between production, like, look, I can't make this any easier. I will try to make it easier. I hear what you're saying. But some, th some things are always going to be hard. True. True. But they burned them. Yep. <laughs> Probably I, I right did yourself. have a, I, I tried to have a sense of, like, if it had a high run rate and we were selling it, I wasn't yeah. going to burn it. Then so, just, like, yeah. I, I held out on some of those. Yeah. You can still burn it. You just can't <laughs> stop production. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> burn it. Okay. Um, who made that helmet? I think Jeff. Branson? Yep. Huh. Yep. Okay. The shooty. Oh, shoot. Yes. <laughs> I always wanted one of those, and I never got one. And everybody universally you don't have one of these? bad mouth I, I those things. I was wearing mine last night. Really? Yeah, this is, this is uh, what I put on for I'm my jealous. son. Yeah. So it's a long sleeve, it's a long sleeve t-shirt with a hood, which at the time, just it's high fashion, blew, blew people's <laughs> minds. And there was, I remember there was, because uh, this was, so this is ABC 2010. Which, which ABC is this? Is 2000, two or three? I think three. Three? Okay. Um, but I remember and, and recalling looking back through pictures that this was, a, it was a really nice day and people yeah. were all up in arms because they were expected to wear a black long sleeve t-shirt with a hood and it was like a beautiful day out and we were like why do we have these horrible t-shirts but now they're they're like they're yeah they're collectors items they have, they have value <laughs> and it's like the most comfortable shirt I'm I own. so jealous I never let managed to land one of those I, I had no idea I was in ownership of such a hot commodity um, <laughs> well if, if it was I, I know it was either ABC two or three because ABC number one was on tax day it was April yep. 15th and in Colorado it's really hard to predict it could either be beautiful outside at 70 degrees or or snowing year, it was snowing 
And so I think we upped the uniforms to try to make Maybe that's it more comfortable. Right, yeah. Uh, and then it just happened to be a sunny day, sunny ABC day here. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was interesting, <laughs> the, the shitties, the, the, the shirts with the hoodie. Uh, but yeah, it was good shirts. Yep. It was good event. Let's still do it. Bring back the shitty. <laughs> no, no. Come on. <laughs> it's a one and only. Okay. This. I'm gonna bring this one out. You might not know what's what's happening here. Oh, that's Tyler Talmadge in a box. Okay, Pete. Is that good? Tyler, <laughs> no, it could be Ray. No. Nope. I think it was Tyler. Pete's got it. Yep. Uh, I remember him like taking off the that, box and he was just Mike covered Snow? in sweat. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so this was um, no. So this was for the soldering competition. Oh yeah. This was our our guerrilla advertising campaign <laughs> that we went on. Yep. <clears throat> um, and so we actually had. I meant to bring the actual sticker, um, but they were handing out flyers and stickers for this competition that we hosted at um, Oscar Blues up in Longmont, the f the first and only soldering competition that we had um, back in. I think 2012. It, it made it made my blog post of the 15 years. So yeah, um, I think it was yeah, 2012. 2000, yeah, 11 or 12. Okay. Um, but that's just a, a great picture of you know the the Spark Fund red box <laughs> out out in public. Yeah. That's on Pearl Street in Boulder. So Oof. good. <laughs> I heard it was just totally roasting in those boxes. Yeah. It'd be a little warm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the soldering competition, how many competitors, do you remember any stats? I, I think we capped it at 40 um, participants. Okay. Yeah. And then we had we had four heats to get into uh, like the Sweet 16. Okay. And then we had the Elite Eight, and then we had the championship. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was, yeah, up at Oscar Blues. Uh, didn't know how it was going to come together, but it ended up being a really great event. Um, you, you guys put this on. This was all yeah. production work. Yeah. Yep. Bob yep. and Tyler, and you guys designed the logo and yep. did it all. Yep. It was really good. Um, I I thought it, you know, because we live in Science Park, <clears throat> I thought that we were going to get 30 or 40, 50 people just like us, you know, mm -hmm. um, hacks that kind of know how to throw holes on or whatnot. Little did I know that in our, in our backyard here up in Longmont, um, there is probably 40 years of experience of storage tech and uh, Maxter and Western Digital and um, manufacturing, hardcore manufacturing right in our own backyard. And so the folks that showed up showed up with serious gear. Yep. These were professionals <laughs> showing up to a competition ready and willing to, to show us their skill. Uh, so I think I was a little unprepared for the level right. of talent that showed up. And uh, it went off went off pretty well. Yeah, were you, it was, it were was you really in? I, you were a witness. I was there for a while. I was a witness, I but I remember you and I competed out back behind the building. Well, that was a different time. It was a different time. Well, no, I think that it was, was precursor to this. Yeah, so that was the... Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was... Um, we, we did like a internal competition to see who of who would represent Sparkfun at that yeah. competition. And um, we're and it, very bad at soldering yeah, under pressure. Was, I forget who out of production, but somebody Tyler, Tyler, that was Tyler. Tyler. Was Tyler. Was the, so yeah. he won the internal and then went to that competition to, to represent Sparkfun. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was a blast. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I remember. Um, so we had some unique awards that we handed out. Um, we're solder joint. Um, <laughs> Safety, safety third yeah, was like a, a, an award, and I remember specifically that one. Uh, Matt Bolton had invited a couple of friends, and one of his friends entered into the competition. And at one point, she went to grab solder wick or solder or something, grab the iron. and put the iron in her mouth. Oh my god! But luckily, the the, the handle part, but still putting... She's holding the iron in her mouth to, like, solder right, or something. Right, yeah, still Sweet. still putting a soldering iron in your mouth Sweet. while fumbling for something else. Oh. Yeah, and oh, so I she got the door. safety third award. <laughs> she, she uh, unharmed, but just yeah. very interesting yeah. soldering practices. Cool. Yep. <laughs> I've done some really sketchy soldering practices myself, but I would never put an iron in my mouth. Well, yeah, this is... this. So, this just came out of my garage, and it's here today for couple of reasons but this is kind of for you Pete so yeah this might not be Man. yours but no it's I, not I vividly remember you and Pete Lewis out back buzzing planes all the time oh yeah and Dom's and, chasing it 
Yep. <laughs> and then landing on a the limo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's still a battery on it. Sweet. I wonder if there's a... Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we... Yeah, poke it with this. Yeah. Um, and we still do this, although we go to the ballpark uh, that's in the business park, and we tend to do... We'll do drones. We'll do planes. We'll do various things. But, um, yeah, it was it was the order of any nice day to go out. And Pete and I were like, oh, we're going to have a 3D summer, man. Because, you know, when you fly planes really wacky, they call it 3D. Huh. I've never really been behind that. It's just, it's all three-dimensional. You fly in three dimensions, <laughs> whatever. Cool. That's cool. fine. Um, but, yeah, I, we did it to such a degree that it ended up on one of your posters. So that yeah. was, yeah, that's a thing. This one's really seen some better days. That, in combination with ABC, um, there's another picture that I came across that I did not print out, um, but I think it was ABC, that same ABC when a plane got stuck in the tree yeah. by, <laughs> and the fire by the building, the fire out. department that had was, to cut the tree. That yeah. was one of the, and then we had one that got stuck on top of, uh, what, Northrop's building? Yep. Uh, yeah, and Northrop then, Grumman, a defense contractor that was across the street, so to go up on the roof, kind of questionable access. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they came out on Saturday so that the competitor could get their junk back. Yep. yep. And then uh, one of the other competitors put it down out by the highway. Yep. Out there. Oof. Oof. We had some sketchy times. Uh, <laughs> aerial n- numerous ABC. landings in the crowd. <laughs> Couple three. Yeah. 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 Yep. That was before it was super dangerous, though. Um, I remember one of the later ABCs uh, at that building. There was a helicopter, uh, and it did manage to not kill anyone, which was really nice. Um, but oh, helicopters I, are scary. I, yeah, helicopters are way scary. Maybe one day we'll bring something back. But <laughs> foam, Ooh. foam planes foam are yeah, nice yeah. at most. <laughs> yeah, the fire department was very cool. So. Cool. And this, uh, I think you and Pete, kind of other Pete kind of like spurred on this whole subculture of spark fun of getting into rc stuff and and now we tried drones you, you had there there's there are lifers and then there are non-lifers like hey, let's poke at it a bit like glenn glenn the oh, new ceo yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's a wannabe lifer but he's not quite a lifer yet. sorry i don't know if you're watching this glenn <laughs> he wants he wants to play with drones. I try to help him play with drones, but the best I picture that has ever been taken of this building was by Glenn from his quadcopter. Yep. He like we were oh. outside and it was like who's flying that quadcopter? <laughs> it's Glenn. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. He's Probably. got uh, this DJI that's almost uh, fully automated. Yeah. And he came out to the ballpark with me and Pete when we were flying ours, and he's like got this screen and he like flies it from the ballpark over to the building. And I'm like, God, mine can't do that. <laughs> and then he flips a switch, and it, like, raises up and flies itself back to the ballpark. I'm like, <laughs> what, are you just upset you've been replaced by a robot? Kind of, <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of that. I can't deny it. <laughs> so, yeah, subculture, but I wish it were more. Lots of All right, we're getting down to the end here. Um, I honestly don't know. Oh, the, the Red Bull uh, story. But, but turn it over. Right. Is this the yes. copywriting trademark? Game no, or uh, it's the old Open Hardware, hardware logo. Oh, okay. So oh, that's what you're looking. Okay. I was looking for that. Um, God, so many stories uh, around this thing. Yeah. Uh, was this the run on? Yeah, it was, uh, the Uno. Uh, Arduino had just changed the Uno, and they added the two I squared C pins, and so no. all of our documentation was wrong. And hadn't they had like a few changes in the like preceding months or something? It was they this was like the straw that broke had, the camel's back. Yeah. We're like, okay, we can't keep doing this. It was um, we had created a bunch of curriculum. We had created the uh, Spark Fun Inventors Kit around the Arduino Uno, and so all of our printed material had a very specific picture of what an Uno was. And when Arduino changed that, it meant that all of our documentation was now wrong. And this was, like you said, the second, third straw. And we said, look, we cannot have a, a very good product held up because some other company keeps changing stuff. So we came up with this, uh, which is basically just the uh, uh, Arduino Uno, but in red form. And uh, Massimo was pretty upset that we had spun our own board. Um, but this was the first kind of challenge because it's open source hardware. SparkFun should be able to do their own board. So we did. We called it Arduino compatible. And um, I'm going to hold yep. it up because yep. there's another piece of it. Um, this logo on the back, I'll try to hold it still, um, is the logo that we came up with 
to try to say that it's the open hardware logo. So this is open source hardware. Um, this was our poking the community and saying, hey community, <laughs> this is what we are going to put on all of our boards that are open source hardware. And if you've got a better logo that you can come up with, please do. But this is what we're going to put on. Um, there was a firestorm on the mailing list. Like, oh my god, no, 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 we, got, we can do better, we can do better. And so uh, that's what started, uh, I think it was a competition on the Oshawa list. Hmm. And uh, at the very end of it, we arrived, the community arrived at the gear with the keyhole through mm -hmm. which is a spin on the OSI logo, which is a spin on something else. Um, but it, I'm very proud that our logo didn't end up. What's handwritten on the back of that thing? I think it just Chris Fran, it's who owns oh, it, oh, oh, where it came yeah, from. Chris, Chris, <laughs> this is Chris Ford. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, our logo did not end up as the hardware logo. It was the community-driven logo rather right. than something we did. Um, uh, yeah, um, 2011. Back when we put date codes on PCBs. It's been a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seems uh, like man. yesterday. All right. And yeah, now we've got the red board, and that's just screaming. Uh, yeah, it's really good. So this is. Uh, oh, I, 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 think oh, no. I think you referenced this in your uh, <laughs> uh, blog post as well. Hi, Fluke. <laughs> oh is, man. I didn't. Sorry. I didn't do this. I'm just pulling stuff out no, of the no, box. No, it's, it's good. Don't, I love it. I love it. Don't shoot the messenger. Um, so I. Pete, Pete, I mean, when, when you, Pete, you Pete. went through school, like, when I touched a multimeter, all the multimeters I ever played with were yellow. Just because. I thought all multimeters were yellow. No, that's that's all the other multimeter manufacturers copying fluke. Copying fluke? Okay. Pretty much. Well, I, to, in my head, it was just a, it was just a multimeter. And um, so in 2009, um, I went on the Geek Tour to China with uh, Bunny and Tom Igo and Leah Beakley and Eric Schweikard and the guys from Siftables, uh, all sorts of folks. And we were walking around the electronics market just asking people like, okay, how much is this LCD? How much are these LEDs? What is this? What is this? And I walked into um, this, kind of this small booth that sold uh, test tools. I was like, wow, they have some multimeters and playing with them. Their cheap multimeters are really easy to tell. You twist the knob, and if it's soft and it doesn't click correctly, and if it doesn't have continuity testing, it's just it's pointless to me. Well, I picked up this one multimeter, and it looked like it had continuity and it had a really good twist to it. And I was like, okay, how much is this? And we did the conversion from uh, yuan, uh, uh, Chinese currency, and it was super cheap. And I was like, wow, this is a really good multimeter. So I brought it back, contacted the company, and uh, Victor is the Chinese company that makes them. And I was like, great, can we get our logo on it? Can we bring them in? Sweet. So we've been selling them by the thousands. Um, they work really, really well. I highly recommend, I've got like three of these. They work great. They're 15 bucks, okay? A fluke multimeter is... Well, at least 150. At least yeah. 150, if not 200 Far more, more, probably. So they're very good multimeters. These have their place as well. Um, but the story goes is we brought in 4,000 of these, our biggest shipment yet, and they hit the port of LA, and we get a letter from the Department of Homeland Security letting us know that these were infringing on the fluke trademark of handheld yellow instruments, and uh, they destroyed them. Destroyed all 4,000. <laughs> there, was, there was like a, a small grace period in there, though, where we were trying to... Nope. Am I remembering this wrong? So we did a post and we were like, hey, Fluke, you're, we love you, but you're killing us. And like, the, I, I, to this day, think it is wildly unfair that a company has a trademark on the color yellow. If you want a trademark, you get the Pantone. You give me the specific yellow that represents your company. And sure, okay, maybe you can have that. But you do not get all handheld instruments that are yellow. And that was their trademark. You're pro right. I, I can I can definitely see that, but on the, I mean on the flip side, right? Um, I can see where Fluke is coming from too, Fair. Be because they, they'd become an icon. I mean, I I don't okay. profess to be okay. any kind of master at law. In fact, I hate law. Um, but uh, I can see where that was an iconic thing, and they could claim that okay. was. And for all I know, they did register it as a trademark. So. Fine, they, they got the trademark, were at fault. My other issue is that as a small business owner, I have to know all the trademarks that exist yeah. so that I don't infringe upon them. Yeah. That seems like a huge burden. There's no way that I have that capability. Um, so I would have loved to have had a slap on the wrist 
uh, hey, for the you, first time, did right. you know that you were infringing? And we'd be like, oh my god, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll change it. And so we did. We made it gray. And now the I swear to God, Fluke was trying to like cut nope. us a deal in that. What they did is they very what would you say, uh, tactfully, very uh, smartly said, "Oh, we're really sorry about that. We'll give you enough Fluke multimeters to replace the value that you lost at the port." So instead of four thousand multimeters, right. they gave us two hundred and fifty multimeters, <laughs> which is. Fair trade. A tiny fraction. Um, but the problem was that we couldn't sell the fluke multimeters. Yeah, we had to donate. We had to donate, which is great. And so some schools got some benefit out of it, and it was really good. But we still got screwed because we were out, we had been out of stock for months, and we were going to be out of stock for another bunch of months until we got it fixed. Lesson learned, small business owner. A lot of lessons <laughs> learned. A lot of lessons <laughs> learned. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, so yeah, that's another one. Yeah. If you see a yellow multimeter that isn't fluke, uh, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's a thing cool. now. And if you see it with a SparkFun logo, snatch it up, man, because yep. that's rare. Yep. <laughs> another collect don't, yeah. don't let the Department of Commerce see that thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're, we're still on a bunch of uh, Department of Commerce lists. Like, uh, yeah, the, the Port Authority knows to check our stuff because we, we've got a lot <laughs> We have problems. a reputation. Yeah. All right, this is our last, last item to discuss. Oh, God, this is what they put shelving together with. Yes. Ah, I don't know the story behind this. I don't I, either. So. <laughs> I recognize it. I, I don't remember what it's about. Okay. You pop, this is all you. So this is, well, this was... Uh, this is what we used to be Dave with. <laughs> yeah, this was shipping inventory control at the time. Um, Former employee TJ, I believe this was his this is his what bad. Used to beat TJ with Dean. But and and yeah, Dean's, Dean, bad. Dean's bad. But Dean and TJ were um, responsible for, I guess, putting together most of our inventory shelving. Mm -hmm. um, I think this started out as a full-fledged wooden bat, and now it is what you see here today. And whittled down. Wood. But um, yeah, in the old building, moves. as as we got you know more and more inventory, we had to build more and more shelving units, yeah. move into. The, the other side of the building, and I think this was the the sole tool responsible for for building all of that shelving. But it says so many things about SparkFun. I mean, it was like we first of all we're we're so scrappy that we can't afford a power. So, yep. Which at the time, so many things we've been chastised for after this many years. Like, mm, don't be that scrappy. But it but it showed the creativity of the employees. Right? It was like, hey, we've got this baseball. Oh, let's use this. Yep. Let's see if this works. And it, I guess it looks like it worked well enough that it. Yeah, it did. Been through. Yeah, it worked really well. And I think even it had there was like, uh, you know, multiple uses for the different sides. Oh. I think the flat side was good for the kind of the horizontal Various uses shelving. Beaten into its shape. Yeah, and then if you needed more of a blunt, you know, impact, you'd rotate it around. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's got us to where we are today. Got us to where we are today. But you go on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Really it, this has been in Dean's office, like, wow. since then. So, yeah. yeah, it's around. That's it in the box. That's it. Yep. Sweet. So, I don't know. Do we want I to tell any other stories or have any other questions from anybody, or should we just call it a wrap? Are we like, even taking questions? Yeah. There might be. Might Do be you guys have any questions? But. Um, I wasn't sure. If, I wasn't sure if we were taking questions. Well, what? I don't uh, think we are. We started the. What before? Before we went live, you and I were talking about something, uh, way back in the day. It wasn't test jigs. It was just a moment in spark fun history. There's so many. Right? Uh, so many yeah, I lose track. Yeah. Not the reflow oven. No. I was afraid one of these pictures was going to be from like Connor O'Neill's or something. And there is. Really that. There is. Well, the, on your blog post, that was a picture from Connor O'Neill's. Yeah, yeah. The first holiday party. Not the William Connor O'Neill's. Yeah. That, that was the second one. one. That was the second one. That's time we got thrown out. Wait, company parties. Didn't we get thrown out of Connor O'Neill's twice? Wait, maybe. Thrown out. Yes, and then. Permanently. And then permanently. Ejected. No, no man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Shoot. Where is Where? the pool? Well, I think he's in the building somewhere. Well, I don't know. He's around. Uh, what do they? What do they ask? Oh, like what is he doing now? Ah, okay. So, uh, God, um, it's so exciting because uh, Glenn is running Spark Fun, and so I have been released just to work on special projects. So I work in the small lab within Spark Fun called Spark X. 
Um, so Nick and I are working together for about the next 12 months on all sorts of wacky, zany SparkX projects. So Nick has graciously uh, decided to um, sort of step down being a creative technologist and he's just going to work at SparkX for the next 12 months and then he's going to go back to being a creative technologist. So you'll still see him. He'll still be in posts and videos and different stuff, but it'll be under the SparkX moniker. What product still Oh, oh, that's well, okay. it. That's the story. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll start with Total Flop because yeah. that might have been mine. There were other products that flopped, but this one was spectacular. Uh, it was called the Uber Tracker, and um, it was a, a combination of cellular, GPS, like all the things you find on your phone, but oh, we have broken one. out and far more oh. expensive. Oh, we have one. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Everybody hated this thing. Uh, it was expensive to produce. It was difficult to produce. Uh, it was expensive to purchase. Look at that. It's got a um, sticker. Like we're all fancy. And it, it was, was supposed to. It was. It was originally. FCC. It was CD, uh, That was PTRB. Oh. PTCRB uh, certified. Oh, first and so only expensive. effort into that. Yeah. Um, that wasn't that expensive. It was like. It was forty thousand dollars. No, it was, was forty thousand dollars. <laughs> that was like fifteen. <laughs> PTCRB. It was so was it? expensive. Yeah. Anyways, tens of thousands. We bought that lesson. Yeah. Um, that was a sp uh, was supposed to be specifically designed to track train cars, and be out in the field for many months at a time, um, and it did work. Mm -hmm. I will say it did work. I did design it well enough that it functioned the way it was supposed to. And um, you know, capture the uh, the GPS coordinates, data log it, and then depending on if a temperature sensor went wild or if you dialed into the unit, it would phone home and say, "Hey, this is my location." Um, I think there was like an oil tanker rail car that oh, they didn't know what it was. There was a rail car that it caught on fire and just started burning. And uh, the firefighters had no idea what was in the car, didn't know what to do with the fire, depending on, it was caustic, it was scary. And because of that accident, there was a need yeah. for a device like this. And so we teamed up with a third party company, kind of consulting, kind of consumer product. And this was- And that was the result. Yeah. Uh, it was a ton of work. Uh, it was uh, based off of another product called the Uber Board. Which was, oh, I forgot that. which was the dev board for the LPC 2140, 30, 38 or 48. 48 yeah. um, and it was about yay big, and it was a kitchen sink. It had freaking everything on it. Yeah. Um, and and then Uber. Morphed it. And Uber. Yeah. Uber was the word. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we took a bath on that one. But, uh, again, a lot of lessons learned in, in that particular product. Yeah. Uh, probably the first is it will never certify anything for TCRB we, again. PTCRB is uh, you go through the certification um, so that your device is allowed to operate on cellular networks. So if you design a thing, T-Mobile doesn't want you turning this thing on and bringing their cellular network down. So you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to say, hey, my product won't ruin your cellular network. Um, so we did that. So this device was fully certified FCC and by T-Mobile and a bunch of other cellular companies to operate. Um, this taught us a lot of lessons. I think that was the first product that had an enclosure and a sticker. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. One, yeah, one of the first. One of the first. The and so after this came yeah. the Geochron, yeah. which sold really well. That one did well. Um, I, I know we did a couple IMUs. We did battery chargers. We did all sorts of stuff in enclosure and stickers. So. Yep. Yeah. The LiPo battery charger. Back in the old days. But we've had better sellers since then. I mean, the Red Bull. Did Did we ever sell Uber trackers? Um, we did. I think it was like a dozen. We tried to. Uh, this is this is before like we released everything all the time everywhere. Uh, we tried to hold on to the code a little bit, huh. just in that like, look, we spent a lot of time making this thing. If you purchase one, we will give you all the code. We will give you everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, as before, we like eh, give you everything. Yeah, here's the zip file. Have fun. Yeah. Actually, uh, so. Yeah, long time ago. Thanks for grabbing that. I didn't know we still had your food trackers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much heartburn over that thing. Will you do another Star You mean like the one we just did? No, the we, like oh, the, oh, the competition. Yeah, okay, okay, so that. <clears throat> soon, um, I'm not sure what soon means, but we we definitely want to. Um, as soon as that competition was finished, we we had a lot of hype and excitement around it. Um, it was intended to continue year after year. Um, I think. 
other events kind of complicated that, you know, continue to focus on ABC, things like that. Um, but yeah, it, we have we have intentions to keep it going. Um, when that's to be determined. That was that was the golden years of like events that Spark Fun was doing. It was the ABC. Yeah. It was the Siren Competition. Antimov. Was, Antimov. Antimov was awesome. But that was also a one-year thing. That was a huge fail. Yep. Yeah. Hey, we had such a great time doing it, but nobody wanted to pony up and destroy it. It made creation. sense. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we're just trying out different stuff. Um, I would love to do another soldering competition. It may take a couple years. But okay. Yep. Um, when you and I had to start telling each other we will not do consulting. Yep. <laughs> mm. So for, for years, customers, we would design a product like, and nope, we're not doing this anymore. Customer would come to us and say, wow, that, you know, the, the NRF breakout board is great, but we need this other connector on it. Can you please just, you know, modify the board a little bit and solder this connector on it? And we said, well, how many units do you need? You need 40 units? Okay, oh, well, yeah, maybe we'll do that. And it's, what we didn't know is that it would throw a kink in the works for production and testing and customer service and all these things. And it seemed like easy money, but then the customer wouldn't pay yeah. and they wouldn't be happy and it just kept failing. And it's then a couple hard, months would go man. by and Pete would be like, hey, let's do this custom thing. I'd be like, okay. Um, and so after <laughs> Uber Tracker. I thought it was you saying that. Was I don't remember. Me. But after Uber Tracker, it was, uh, we then learned to tell the other one no more consultants. It's like, remember? Remember what we talked remember, about? Yeah. To this day, we don't do consulting. How long does it take to go from product idea to selling the product? Uh, it depends question. what side of the building you're on right now. Depends on which side of the building you're on. Definitely. It depends on the product. So um, on the regular storefront, we'll talk about just sparkfun.com. Um, <clears throat> if it is a resale item, I think we can move pretty quick. It's probably four to eight weeks. So we get samples in, we test it, we look at it, we take pictures, we do the video, we, uh, that goes live pretty quick. Um, if it is a board design, um, that takes a little bit longer, probably two to three months. Um, breakouts, from... breakouts could be done in like three. Yeah. But um, as we've gotten bigger and more complicated, everything's gotten bigger. Every, there's, there's more bureaucracy, more forms, more approvals, more everything. And it just takes time it takes to circumvent that. I... Except for Spark. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so to continue with Spark, I think that the big deal is documentation. So yeah. to, to to design a board, cool. We can do that. You can do that in a couple of days. Um, to then you know fully document it so that anybody can use it the moment that they get it, and to do the video and to do a demo project, all of that takes weeks. Um, so it can really slow down. Um, the opposite end of the spark, down at SparkX, um, I think our record is nine days. So we saw a thing and said, uh, that's awesome, whether it was a DigiKey feed or something we somebody recommended. Um, we ordered the parts, we designed the board, we assembled it, and we posted it in nine days. So um, you get like 50 boards from Osh Park and just run? Uh, PCBs come from PCB Way. Stencils okay. come from Osh Stencil. We've got all the stuff down in SparkX to hand stencil, hand place, hand reflow, hand test. We take the photographs, we write the product description, we, the three of us, two or three of us, just do everything, and we can get it done in nine days. Now, what that means is that you don't get a hookup guy, yeah. right? You don't, you don't have the full documentation that you would from a SparkFun product. But our core customer, the, the folks that are watching and really enjoy that cutting edge, the newest thing, well, here's the newest thing, even though the, uh, you know, uh, the solder, as it were, hasn't even dried yet, yeah. um, but it's, it's quick. <laughs> And now the challenge of going from a nine-day to market cycle versus a three-month three finding that happy medium of, of the right quantity, the right price point, all of that, that's kind of where we're at right now as a team is getting that transition of SparkX to, to SparkFun products and getting things to market. So. Yeah. Great, great question. I think that's it. Right. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Nate. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. It was fun. Thank, thank you. you. That was, was fun. Time. That's yeah. Been and it's thank been a you. Wild 15 years. Well, I hope, yeah, <laughs> look forward to another 15. Uh, yeah, thanks everybody watching. Uh, this will be available on our social channels. Uh, so, Twitter, Facebook, um, you can find the recorded version of this video. And uh, thanks again. See you guys. Yeah, thank you much.